Hey everyone, it's Adelaide Winterstep and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, but I've taken a little bit of a break. I got my computer working again and now I can re film and re-edit everything and so I'm back today with a video that's going to be introducing one of my new horses so let's go ahead and get into it. Introducing Cloud9. A seven-year-old Orlov Trotter track in her mix, we have to flash back two weeks when he first arrived at the stable and everyone was in awe of his beauty. We had a photo shoot right off the bat and I got the opportunity to ride him that exact night here at the stables, as well as the opportunity to go ahead and trailer him out for the first time, which was such a blast. With all that in mind, we're heading out today to an entirely new show. This is gonna be our first show together and actually Cloud9's first show in general. And so we're gonna go ahead and do a full cleaning, grooming routine after taking a bath and pack the trailer and get ready for this one day event that's near the Silverglade Acres area. As we drive there, I'll be explaining a little bit more of how I found the show. The show was actually a local show that was recommended to me by a friend, and typically it's not showing season here in Norvik, but they do have a couple of fuzzy and furry shows, and this was one of them. This one's just a general one to clean up and touch up right before it gets into the dead of winter and it gets too cold to show. So we're getting ready for all of that and everything, and I wanted to get Cloud9 out there before he would have to stay indoors in indoor arena for the rest of the season. So we're taking our opportunities while the weather's nice and there's still a couple shows out and about. Not to mention, I've entered a couple of other shows, especially one day events, with other project horses that you all will get to meet later on that I haven't yet introduced to you. But that's just part of the developing storyline that you'll get to see as my videos progress. So we finally arrived and I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of an outfit overview since I have so many requests for where I get my clothes and how I put them together. So I'm going to temporarily tell you guys just some of the basics of the clothes and where I get them. So we're tacking up with my white Governor's Fall saddle pad. This is found in Governor's Fall. And I'm also putting on my Governor's Fall black dressage saddle in matte and they absolutely look lovely together. And this jacket is actually found in the mall. It's my SSO team jacket, and that one is one of my most wanted jackets that I have. Also, before I went into the dressage arena, I decided to take off my jacket last minute. And now we began our test. Our test was fairly early in the morning, so we started right off the bat. And in the Your Vegan testing system, there's lots of circles and lots of cantering in their tests. The tests are more generally... Um, I'll look at the horse's gates and your control together, similar to an equitation pattern in many other areas, the Orvegian tests basically test on backing up and stopping and such, and also incorporate modern day dressage techniques like long walking and other ideals like Piaf and Pirouette in the more advanced tests. Cloud9 excels in dressage, his gates are absolutely gorgeous, he's got this lovely floating trot and it just gets me so excited for the future knowing that we could possibly go up even higher the more I train him and the more I work on him. So after dressage, we didn't have our next two classes, etc. for a little while, so we decided to go hand grazing and I'll just walk him around while I explain a little bit about Clown9's past. Clown9 was bred and raised at Jorvik Stables and has been there all his life for seven years, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And they've trained him for quite a bit, but he was in the lesson program for a little bit although he didn't excel at that, so they moved him into the student program where he began to work with students as their project horse, but he was always seeming to be kind of unfinished, and they never really took him to shows or to clinics or take, took him out. So the last time that I took him out was cross country in Fir Grove, and that was actually his first time with me going out, but also one of his first times going out in general. He wouldn't go out that often, so it was kind of fun to experience life with a really inexperienced horse. But I do have other project horses that I'm working on this season that you'll get to see that are even more green than Cloud9 is. This is indeed Cloud9's first show, and I'm still getting to know him. I barely have a nickname for Cloud9. Comment down below what you think you want it to be, but I would definitely say that I don't know Cloud9 as much as I thought I would, and so it can be a challenge 
figuring things out as you go along, especially with these one-day events that can be really stressful and tiresome, and you just have to try and figure out your horse as you go. So I'm just trying to do that with this horse, but it's obviously a challenge, especially in these dressage and cross-country classes and show jumping, of course, where it's just so incredibly difficult to connect. Cross country time, we have our dark blue saddle pad from the mall with our Star Stable logo on it, as well as our night riding jumping saddle also from the mall. Then we have this blue set of boots also from the mall with these little cup boots on, which are absolutely lovely and they all match. So the cross country course this time around was fairly simplistic. There weren't that many jumps, there were just a lot of challenging downhill slopes, etc. So we definitely had to watch out for that and keep them challenged. But I decided that this time around, I really just wanted to school and take it slow, making sure that you understood what I was asking of him before moving on to the next idea. So this downhill area was kind of almost a danger hazard. There were a lot of rocks in this area, and I wasn't a fan of this part of the course in general, but he handled it absolutely like such a saint, and we instantly got a little bit of speed after that. The difficult part about these are there are lots of serpentines on the edge of the cliff, which... I mean, there are fences, but it can definitely be a spooky factor for a horse going on such a small space, having to quickly hand gallop across these areas. It's obviously not ideal, so I'm not a big fan of these typical Norwegian cross-country courses since they seem a little bit almost dangerous in a sense. Our first jump went excellent. He headed at it really, really well, and he went over that bridge with ease, no spooking factor or anything, and took the second log lovely. At this point, we actually got a little bit lost, and so the video kind of skips around a little bit, but we finally found our way again onto the normal path, and we hit that, and it was pretty, pretty steep, so I definitely felt challenged, but we honestly went on, and for the rest of the course, um, I'm just going to let you watch it, it's pretty simplistic, we did end up getting a refusal on this jump up here, and that was kind of on my fault. I was holding him back a little bit, wasn't letting him stretch himself out, and in turn, he got a little nervous and such. But yeah, aside from that, the rest of the course went fantastic. Lastly, we have show jumping, of course. So my gear has changed yet again, and for the main part of the gear to know is my shirt is from the Jorvik Stables Arena store that's by the little dressage arena. 
And this saddle pad is actually from Governor's Fall yet again from one of my favorite stores. So those are the basic parts of our outfit and we actually just headed straight into our jumping class. So enjoy. So thank you everyone so much for watching. I know this wasn't the 10,000 subscriber special. We're actually about to hit 12,000 subscribers. I'm low-key disappointed in myself, but um, I'm still working on that. It's a huge, huge project. It uses a lot of star coin, a lot of times, so many outfit changes. It's not even, it's not even real. But get excited for my December series that I'm gonna be starting. It's gonna be all about how to make your own realistic roleplay YouTube channel, how to do realistic roleplay, enter live shows, make your pictures, make your outfits, etc, etc. So get excited for that. Make sure to comment down below, like, and subscribe, and check out my resources in the links down below. I love you all so much, and thank you. Goodbye. See you next time.